Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have a Resident Richard which we all know is similar to the Cobra 148 GT LDX but using the later probably cheaper board but it should be okay but before we start don't forget to like share subscribe comment join Facebook join Patreon buy me a coffee have a look at my website microchips.net where all my boards are and let's get started on this President Richard. So I bought it as working, so there should be no issues inside. And taking the lid off, everything looks as it should be in there. There's no horror stories in there, so we're impressed with that. VCO's not been twiddled with. AM power's cranked a bit high, but yeah, what do you expect? Everything else looks okay. Everything looks just fine. As to be expected. Apart from this crusty little bit of foam that's deteriorated. But that's nah, not a problem. It's to be expected for a radio of this age. We can see the AMC and the ALC has been cranked as well. Only to be expected. But it shouldn't be a problem. Everything looks good. Everything looks just fine in here. And let's have a look at the money side. And good. There's no rat's nest of diodes across it. Just having a quick look round on the board. Everything looks just fine. Looks like there's been no major work done on it. So, yeah, I think, I think we're on to a winner with that. So to start this off, we've got the front off. There's there it is, PB010AC. I think that's the later revision of board. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be fitting a frequency counter um, socket to this. So I've had to remove the power socket. We've drilled a nice hole in the back. We've put a rubber grommet in place for the cable. We'll attend to that in just a moment. But we're going to do the... Um, the AM regulator, SSB regulator, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to upgrade that to a beefier transistor. Get rid of this 2SA1012 that's in there. Put something in that's a little bit more, a little bit more beefy, should we say? So I need to remove this transistor, and we're going to be fitting a TIP 36C, which is a complete overkill, but it's good. It'll handle the um, handle the current needed. So there, there it is with its legs carefully bent into place, and we're going to put the TS uh, the two SA ten twelve into the place of the other transistor that we removed, but just turning it round, and that should provide an upgrade for that circuit. So there's the frequency counter loom. So we've got to coax that needs to connect to the VCO and also power USB and LSB so we're rooted it around the side nice and neatly I think that's good enough using the cutouts for seem to be conveniently placed for the cable ties we'll pop the power socket back in so we're gonna solder up all the connections we had to remove for that I took the power socket out just so uh, yeah I don't know whether you saw that but that was a charge capacitor made a nice spark so once that's soldered back in again we need to find a 8 volt supply which should be the um, rail right at the very front sure enough there's our 8 volts so that will be for our main supply for the counter and also we need to find USB and LSB 8 volts which is normally around this place so we'll just find it with the multimeter and there they are there's our USB and LSB voltages so there's ground USB LSB and power connected up nice and neatly done and the signal for the frequency counter comes off TP3 and runs out to the socket there so that's it for the frequency counter 
So we've got it plugged in and hooked up and it is working. Now this frequency counter isn't meant to be anything of any accurate, should we say. It's just there for reference, but I'm just checking that it is working and the offsets are working correctly. And then we will align the radio properly. So first check, mid-band channel 19, AM, scope on TP4, and we're going to adjust L17. Just to make sure that this is correct, it says 0.9 volt peak to peak. But we just want to just make sure it's maxed out on there, which it is. It's pretty well maxed out. So, yeah, that's all good. Let's move along to the next alignment point. And that's going to be um, TP2, so bare leg of R126. It should be our VCO. Now we've got our scope on TP3 and we're adjusting L19. Just making sure that's around 1 volt peak to peak. So we'll just peak that up. Doesn't need much adjustment. So, that so first off we need to adjust L21 for 16490. So AM again, channel 19, uh, mid band. Should be 16490 and these coils are twitchy as hell so we've just got to be um yeah nice and gentle with them whilst we're adjusting it this is one of the things that makes the dds a lot more stable because there's none of this drifting about in the breeze so the next one should be usb then we're going to adjust L22 for 16.4925. You can see just a tiny little turn of these cores sends it all over the place. So we'll get it close by 16.4925 for that. Close enough. And the last one we're going to be doing LSB, which will be L23 for 16.4875. So you can see these are a little bit out. And that's 16.4875. And just the slightest nudge of this core sends it all over the place. So we just have to adjust it and move away. Even me putting a ceramic screwdriver in it is causing it to change. So that, that's those adjusted nicely. Okay, on to the um, carriers. So USB, TP6, top lead of R60, adjust L38 for 10.6925. So this is a nice easy one to adjust. And then we move on to LSB. And we're going to be adjusting L39 for 106975. Okay, I've just about got that into place. This one's a little bit more forgiving on the adjustment. So we'll just gently adjust it up for 106975. And that will be our LSB adjustment. So as you can see, we just move away from it and it does change. So we'll just go back to it and just get it bang on. Just like so. I think that's good enough. And the last adjustment will be TX mode in AM. We're going to adjust L37 for 27.185. It's a nice easy adjustment to do. There it is. So that's how our carrier is done. Yeah, bang on. Very nice. Let's do our biases. So we've got our ammeter between TP9 and TP8. We've we'll unplugged the board, of course, and we're going to adjust. And this will be VR11 for about 50 milliamps. You can always double check this by going onto the base, seeing if it's round about 0.7 of a volt. Either way of doing it is just fine. 
but this way is convenient with the uh, test points on the top of the board so now we've moved onto TP7 and we're going to adjust VR10 for 50 milliamps again it's always best just to double check these on the bases just to make sure I did notice that I had my leads the wrong way around it doesn't matter but this control is always a bit twitchy around about 50 60 milliamp is always it's just about fine there'll be no problem with that like I say just verify the base is 0.7 of a volt let's have a look at uh, carrier leakage so SSB no mic input Just checking upper and lower sideband for um, carrier balance. Checking USB and LSB. Getting it down to as minimum minimum as possible. Very nice. Now everybody's favourite part of the show. The cyanide readings. Because you know. Every good, um, good technician, engineer must show his cyanide readings so let's have a look so 27.185 round about minus 100 yeah it's got enough well let's give it a good old fashioned clean up don't do much cleaning on this channel anymore so let's break out the foam cleaner and give the front a good old fashioned clean Get it looking nice and um, nice and sparkly, which it does. And we'll give the lid the same treatment as well. I think it deserves it. It does look a little bit grubby. I don't think it needs powder coating. It's in quite good condition, apart from a few marks on the side. So we'll leave them. And of course, refitting all the um, control knobs back on again with the necessary plastic rings making sure that you get the the right one back into place because the one for the shift is marked up differently as you can see i completely forgot to put the plastic ring on that one so we'll pop that one back off put the plastic ring back on again and pop the knob back into place when I can find the right one as you can see there we go yep that's the right one the last one over there must be the KC shift so we'll put that back into place bit fiddly with our plastic ring that keeps um keeps coming off so we'll just hold it into place pop it down yep beautiful very nice we'll put the other two knobs back on the last job solder the speaker back on with some nice fresh solder because we don't want Chris Peel telling me off for sloppy solder joints on the on the speaker so we'll make it look nice and tidy so I get his approval for that and last job some nice new stainless um, screws to go with it just to finish it off there very nice So there's our President Richard with its frequency counter, cable fitted, nicely aligned, nicely serviced, fantastic, nice sounding radio, receives well, I don't think we need to do anything else to that. Anyway that's it for this episode, thanks for watching, don't forget to 
like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net, where all my boards are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.